Hong Kong is perhaps the most walkable city in the world, as we've heard, in large part due to its small footprint bounded by sea and mountains. So this is the perfect setting for this conference. In this talk, we hope to discuss elements of Hong Kong that work well in areas that perhaps could be improved, identifying urban planning strategies for emerging cities and cities in transformation. Fundamental to a healthy city is a walkable city. And that means, as you could see, less than five kilometers per hour designing for movement. Walkable city has an environmental impact. It's at the core of uh, economic issues, better health, uh, less cost for health care. Um, another economic advantage for walkable cities is the desire of millennials, for example, to move to cities that are more walkable. And an example is, is Portland, Oregon, where the largest number of millennials have been moving into the city in the last few years because it is set a priority for walkability. It has spent 60 million on bike paths in the last 10 years, which is equal to the cost of a overpass, which they now do not require. And obviously, in terms of social connection to the city, feeling and belonging, walkability uh, instills that in, in everyone. So at the core of the social, economic, and environmental is walkability. We all would, would hope to recreate village life, as you can see in this image, as a sustainable environment in our cities, but we understand the reality is that we have pressures to accommodate millions of people in the coming years. And as you, I think another example of sustainability is the mix of um, uh, retail, purchasing, and a, an example in this image is buying the fish, eating the fish, and selling the fish all in one spot. It's useful to look at communities around the world and how they address walkability. Essentially, the fabric of the city dictates walkability. And you can see in the image on the top left, that is not a walkable city. That is a new city in Canada, and it's completely dependent on the car. Other cities in these images, you can see the, the, uh, the city grid is finer tuned. Uh, for example, New York in the center is a very walkable city. It's the most walkable city in, in the U.S. Um, and it has a grid, which a maximum grid of in the, um, in the north-south direction of 200 feet, which allows, um, it allows two lanes of traffic to work. As soon as you exceed that, it re you require um, two to four lanes, or an additional uh, two lanes of traffic, traffic which means more cars in your city. New York is uh, now undergoing a transformation, rezoning, to ensure that its population is within uh, 10 miles, sorry, sorry, 10 minutes of uh, transit. So obviously we might, we look at other cities, Venice is uh, an obvious example, it's a pedestrian environment. Um, however, there are a few lessons to learn from Venice, except that it has not remained relevant in terms of transit and adapting to modern life. So its population in, uh, in the last three or four hundred years, from the 16th century at its peak to today, has dropped from 170,000 to 60,000 and is continuing to decline because it does not have the infrastructure to support modern life. It's um, one of the reasons is a lot of the canals. It was a, a boat-based, water-based transportation system. A lot system. A lot of the canals have been filled in, and to undo that is is 
not possible, perhaps. Brasilia, a modern city, again, does not work for walkability. It was planned from, the aerial, from an aerial view, um, so its scale does not, does not facilitate walking. And New York, as we just talked, um, has an infrastructure of streets and park systems, especially with the new high line and low line that provide um, pedestrian circulation through the city um, and mobility. So we come to Hong Kong, which, as we said, is perhaps the most walkable city in the world. And it's an unusual city in that it's a city without ground, as we've heard from um, uh, speakers today. It's a, it's a three-dimensional network of paths, um, MTR, public space, private space, and it's generated from top-down, bottom-up, um, through private uh, enterprise paying for pathways to support their, their commerce, and through government, creating connections um, through uh, connections to um, commercial, residential, and city fabric. And this is just, just an example of the uh, transformation of a community where bridges have been added, um, and the, you can see the vertical organization of the city with retail on many levels and how well it works for the pedestrian. What strategies can we employ to ensure healthy communities for the world's growing population? Number one, to set the stage, you must have transportation, connectivity, and pedestrian linkage of urban rooms. Add to that order, rhythm, variety, and a mixed demographic, demographics which all is possible through walkable city. And to make sure people are comfortable 24 hours, that requires attention to detail, which we'll talk about later. So these are images of uh, Hong Kong. On the right, you see the, uh, the streetcar uh, and how it works with MTR connections and pedestrian so well. And of course, on the left, um, the car and how we must keep it out of the city, providing linkages to MTR and places to uh, park. The next typology of public space um, are pathways and squares. And I think the square is one of the most interesting public spaces, a place where people gather, connect, and uh, engage in public discourse. On the right is the um, Piazza di Santa Maria in Rome. And it's a uh, characteristic of all squares in Rome, where the square has a very specific dimension. It's 30 meters maximum. And that was based on someone entering the square and being able to hear and see the person on the opposite side of the square, to recognize facial features. And it was about security and safety. Uh, and that is still a model for the ideal urban room, which we'd like to see more of in Hong Kong. And again, the rhythm and chaos of public space. On the left, a view of Hong Kong with its multi-level circulation and how wonderful it is. And on the right, an orderly pattern um, of a square, European square. And I think we'd like to say as architects, we really do like things messy. We like the chaos and the collision that happens in Hong Kong. It, it leads to um, inter in interaction with the public that may not happen. And uh, it makes the, the city accessible to uh, rich, poor, and um, 
uh, all ages and creates a safe environment. And this is an example of public space. This is the, on the left of the HSBC and how it's inhabited. Um, it's a commercial building, but it has multiple uses. So, and a street scene on the right. And of course, 24-hour use makes Hong Kong one of the safest cities in the world. Also, attention to detail, how people sit in squares, how comfortable they are, is important. And having more places to sit and enjoy public space is a goal for Hong Kong. As Amanda Burden said, a planner of New York City, we judge the health of our city by the dance of its streets, plazas, and parks. So this is one of, uh, one of our projects, um, the West Kowloon Cultural District. Um, we won a competition uh, in 2012 to design the gateway to the West Kowloon. Um, West Kowloon is a new cultural district, if, for those that do not know, and it's, it's one of the most prominent sites in Hong Kong. It's going to be an entirely pedestrian environment with an infrastructure below linking parking, uh, transit, and uh, uh, service vehicles. And as well, it's, uh, it has uh, the high-speed train that provides a catchment area of 30 million people to the site. So it's well connected to the city. Um, so the building, our building is right at the, the corner of the site. Um, so it's right here. And this is a pedestrian avenue that links M plus and arts facilities, which eventually will include opera houses and theaters and residential and a large waterfront park. You can see the network of, oops, well, sorry. Um, Sishu Center is, the program is to house the ancient art form, performing art form of the Sishu, which is a um, indigenous um, UNESCO art form. And in, typically incurred in outside plazas and piazzas. Um, and this is views of uh, the artists. So as part of our project to um, to allow for, a, to create a public civic space that connected to the city, to the MTR, to the pedestrian avenue, we raised the theater above, above the, uh, the site to create a space where public could meet, um, uh, engage in uh, discussion, rest, or participate in a, in a uh, performance. So this is an image of the theater and what it would occupy if it sat on gray. There would be no life in the city because the theater is not always used during the day. So by, by raising the, the theater above the site, and this is, so this is your public, this is the public plaza connecting to MTR um, below and to the city infrastructure and the theater above with gardens overlooking the city. And this is a, a view of the project uh, early construction and current state of construction and opening in, uh, uh, in a few years time. Again, the theater and the public public activity below the theater. And here's the, the, the geometry of the room, the 30 meters that which, which we talked about earlier in the Roman square. Um, and so we've, 
we've created two squares, a lower and an upper square. And a further diagram showing the theater and the public square. So there are two levels, two levels of uh, retail and an education center that overlook this public space. So this is a room for the city. It's uh, open to the um, the elements, but protected at the same time. Um, it's semi semi enclosed. It's a place where people can come to to gather, um, whether for per whether for performances or just to relax. And this is the a view of the High Line in New York, which is extremely, I think, as we all know, popular. Um, uh, new addition to the city. This is a view of the plaza and how we see it will be used. It could be used for exhibits, performances, and again just to um, relax and find a place to sit in the city. And this is the, the exterior of the building uh, as it will be. This is a project in Edmonton um, it's a it's a arts facility, and it's a, a, a consists of a theater and um, lecture halls and uh, workshops, and this uh, the organization of the public space was very important to us, and and really we're using principles that one would use in the city in terms of creating uh, collisions, focal point, and exchange. So we really we looked at the public space, which is this diagram, and how it could be organized to encourage the users of the building to interact and to create a dialogue between performing arts, music, uh, wig making, and, um, and research. And we see that as a, uh, embodying the same principles that one would use in creating a, a healthy and walkable city. Uh, this is the uh, aquatic center in, in Vancouver. And in this project, which is a, a community center and swimming pool um, for a new community, largely a migrant or immigrant community, where there is a a need for a focus and in this uh, in this project we uh, we created a link from the transportation node through to the city center um, through the through the um, the swimming pool and uh, community center so that the public move throughout the day along this walkway and it's it's open it's open uh, throughout the day and evening to the public without um, entering the pool. So again, it's about integrating uses and mixing uses in a city to create this inter uh, sense of community and belonging. This is a college in Fort Worth. Um, when we started this project, we uh, talked to the people of Fort Worth and we, you know, we asked them, where is your, where is your river? And, and we found that people didn't know where it was in the city. It was largely ignored. It was a place for the prison and place to um, place refu um, garbage. And um, we used our project, again, just as one might do in Hong Kong, to create a link to the water through the, the creation of um, urban, urban uh, street and eventually a connection across the river in a, a future phase. So this is, the, this is the urban space that we talk about, the street, and of course water is an important element of all public space, which we'd love to see more of in Hong Kong and around the world. And this is an example of how, how the uh, public space is used um, for public performance. And um, 
another project. This is uh, the fastest growing city in, in Canada, um, largely a suburban development or um, community, and again, a, um, a very large immigrant population. So we looked at organizing the city centre, um, uh, reanimating the, the urban development to create focus, urban squares, and um, residential high-rise development so that there was life in the city. And this is an image of Surrey. And this is the... Um, we created a city centre. This was a shopping mall. And we placed on top of the shopping mall, by breaking it open, we placed a, a new campus for the FS, SFU. Um, and this is a library that we built in the um, public square and future buildings to come to create the city centre. This is the, the uh, campus that was placed on top of the shopping mall. And again, it's a mix, mixing uses that create a successful uh, urban environment. And this is the library. And again, it's a public room. It's really about, I think in our work, creating a public space, rooms within the city, whether they're exterior or interior. So as you can see, the, the organization, the building, it faces onto the square and it's enjoyed by the community, as you can see. And this is a uh, workshop that being held, I think, going back to the discussion about uh, details in public spaces, the design of seating and how comfortable it is. And in this workshop, we had um, children design furniture for the library. So this is uh, various um, mock-ups of furniture and all of these, well, we selected a handful of uh, students' work, children's work, and they became, they were, became part of the furniture of the, the library. So in an urban space, the detailing of, of the urban fabric at a micro scale is, is very important. So, to summarize, the strategies that employ and ensure healthy communities for the world's growing population are connectivity, urban rooms, mixture of demogra demographics and, and safe environments, um, and attention to detail. As Amanda Burden said, it's about a dance of public space. So as a group, let's dance together to make our cities great and happy places for the world. Thank you.